What's going on, peeps? It's Wrath here, hanging out today, playing some Idle Heroes. I want to thank you guys so much for coming out with me today. If you liked the video, don't forget to smash that thumbs up button and show your support. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe as well. Alright guys, so there's not a ton going on in Seasonal today. Um, so instead of doing a Seasonal video, we're going to do a hero analysis from the private server. Because I've had one here, I'm supposed to be doing, like, I don't know, for a long time. But I just haven't done it yet. Today... We're going to do it. It's going to be the analysis on Heart Watcher. Now, I like my Heart Watcher. I'm a big fan of Heart Watcher. If you don't know, you probably haven't watched the channel much, so I do like her. All right, she's a thing. She's definitely a thing. So like always, we're going to talk about her skills, um, gearing, where she's good, where she's not good, and kind of go from there. All right, so let's start things out here with the active skill of Heart Watcher. It's a long one. It's called Mind Torture, so it's, it's automatically good. Um, anyways, it's going to deal 255% of her attack as damage against two random enemies, reducing their attack by 25% for two rounds, and tags them with a Watcher Mark. Watcher Mark will increase targets taken damage by 45%. Watcher Mark's effects can stack up to 300%. Okay, so essentially what that means is she's going to do a debuff on attack for the enemy, which is fantastic. Oops, went away. She's also going to make sure that target she hits takes more damage. Um, that's fantastic against bosses when you get to stack this up over and over again, but it also has some use in PvP. Um, not quite as much in-game, but early on, it's definitely not a bad unit for PvP. Um, but yeah, the 300% increased damage, that translates out to times 4 damage. You're going to do 4 times more than normal once she's stacked her marks completely up. That's a pretty big deal, um, especially in boss battles where it's going to really increase your team's damage. Her first passive here, the Tough Heart, increases attack by 30%, crit by 30%, and HP by 20%. Just kind of your basic buffs. When you see crit on a passive, usually that means you can re your, that hero is going to really benefit from a high crit build. Um, it definitely works that way here. But anyways, next passive here, Critical Strikes has a 100% chance to heal self for 280% of attack as HP. That's really powerful, especially if you build her with high crit. The more she crits, the more she heals. Um, that's going to be pretty hard to stop. Not so much in PvP, but really well in PvE. Um, especially things like the Aspen Dungeon. She's very solid there. We'll talk about that in a second. Last passive here, the Weakness Strike. This is going to give her basic attack. It's going to target two random enemies, dealing 110% of her attack as damage. And it's also going to tag the enemy with a Watcher Mark. Um, this one's only going to increase the damage taken by 35% on the basic attack, um, where the active skill does 45%. Doesn't really matter, though, because they're still going to cap off at 300%. Okay, so if you run two Heart Watchers, they're still only going to cap off, I believe, at 300%. You don't get 600% with two Heart Watchers that I know of. I've never built two of them, but I would assume having two just reaches that cap faster. But anyways, that means even on her regular attacks at an active skill, A, she still has a chance to heal if she crits. Two, she's going to be putting watcher marks and debuffing the enemy even just on basic attacks, which is a pretty strong thing. So that's her skills. As you can see from the skills, she's got a pretty good PvE kit. Um, increasing damage taken by units is fantastic. Attack break can actually help you out quite a bit as well. Um, and being able to heal herself with her critical strikes and having a passive crit is again, that's going to help you a lot with self-sustain early on, and also is going to do really well in the Aspen Dungeon, keeping her alive while she also makes her targets weaker and weaker and weaker, and she hits harder and harder and harder. It definitely works out. Okay, so the gearing guide, I've got all the assassin gear on mine because it's awesome, and why wouldn't you have it on her? Because it's awesome. Okay, um, I might get more damage out of it, like on a Walter or something, but for the Aspen Dungeon... You want your best stuff on your main Aspen hero. In this case, that's Heart Watcher. Um, the stone, there's a couple different stones you can take. Um, in my case, I run the crit, crit, and attack. That's max 6-star Celestial Stone. Um, the crit and crit damage is going to boost her damage more than a crit HP stone. You can run crit HP, though. It's going to give her a little more tank ability because that extra health is going to be nice. Trust me, in the Aspen Dungeon, that can really help you out. Um, and the crit percentage is a little bit higher on the crit HP stones it is on the crit crit stones. This just does a little more outright damage, um, and I kind of like it. So I run the full crit with the attack at 6-star. Um, if you don't have the 6-star Celestial, it's not going to have the attack percentage, I think, until... Is that 5-star? I think it's 5-star Celestial starts giving attack. I don't know. Um, but crit and crit damage or crit and HP are probably your two best options. Nothing else is really going to do great for her. She doesn't need a lot of HP. I mean, attack, attack could work, but you're going to miss out on so much crit and crit damage, it might not be worth it, unless you have a really, really, really good artifact, um, like the uh, staff, the Punisher of the Immortal, 
that's really good artifact for if you don't have a crit crit stone, um, a crit HP stone, or if you're just doing an attack stone, if you're, I don't know, you're of that nature. Those are possibilities. The artifacts, it depends on where you're going with her. In the Aspen Dungeon, um, the Magic Stone Sword is really powerful in my opinion because it's going to reduce her damage taken. It's going to buff her attack, which means the higher attack, the more she heals when she crits. And it's also going to reduce her chance to get controlled, so stunned, frozen, etc. That's really strong in the Aspen Dungeon because those are the nodes that usually give you the most headache until you get to Nightmare where everything gives you a headache. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's a Margaret, it's going to be a problem. So, um... Yeah, definitely, I like the Magic Stone Sword for getting to Nightmare. Once you get to Nightmare, I guess it's going to kind of change a little bit. If you want more damage and outright just humph punching people in the face, you can put like a, a, a the Punisher the Immortal on to really knock through people. Um, I still feel like reduced damage is really, really important though, and it's hard to get away from it in the Aspen because when you do, you take a lot more damage and you die pretty quick. So I would say anything that boosts her crit... Um, or attack is not bad for all around like boss damage and stuff, but when you go to the Aspen, you're going to want something probably with reduced damage. Uh, the, like I said, the Magic Stone Sword is my favorite for it. If you don't have one of those, um, the Oak Heart actually works pretty well. It gives you HP and reduced damage, and since she's forest, it gives her extra HP, so that's not a bad exclusive red. And there's also a uh, what is it called? The Rune Power or something? The orange version of that. Obviously going to give you even more reduced damage and HP. So you kind of want to tank her up, especially since in the Aspen Dungeon, if you've got a 10-star Heart Watcher, you're, you should always be smashing a difficult no problem anyway. You're going to get a lot of these potions. We're going to just check that out real quick. Can I see them from now here? Oh, I'm dead, so you can't see anything. But you get a lot of these potions stacked up. The three on the bottom here, there's crit damage, attack, and crit percent. You're going to usually get enough crit percentage to make up for missing the crit. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you don't really need double crit for the Aspen Dungeon because you're going to get that crit passively through the potions you get. So, you don't want to overstack your crit past 100% because it doesn't really matter at that point. Um, you're better off taking and getting something else like the reduced damage, in my opinion. But as you saw, I did that's Nightmare 1. I think my record's Nightmare 8. Yes, Nightmare 8, and that's with Heart Watcher. Okay, that's, she's my only Aspen unit, really. I've got the 9-star Vessa, but she gets totally crapped on way early before uh, Heart Watcher does. But there you go. It shows you absolutely 100% she can make the Nightmare in Aspen. So where is she good? Where is she not good? Obviously, she's good in the Aspen dungeon. You just saw that. She's fantastic against bosses because she's going to increase their damage taken, which means your whole team is going to deal extra damage to that boss now, which boosts your damage by a lot. Just a 5-star Heart Watcher, believe it or not, can massively increase boss damage depending on where you're fighting. You know, if you're fighting like the Kamath Marauders, a 5-star Heart Watcher is just going to die immediately. So, um, yeah, not going to boost your damage much there. Um, but like early guild bosses and stuff, um, it's nice to obviously scale her up with your team as your team goes higher. But like I said, even throwing a 5-star Heart Watcher on your Marauder fights against Margarets and stuff can boost your damage quite a bit. She's really solid in boss, um, boss areas, so guild boss, Marauders, Broken Spaces, stuff like that. Probably her best roles, that in the Aspen Dungeon. When it gets to PvP, I would say she's definitely weaker in PvP. But early game, like, um, a lot of people, when they say, oh, she's trash at PvP, they're talking in-game PvP, and there's a really big difference between the two, okay? Early game PvP, you're using whatever you have to fight in the, in the arena. Early game, a 10-star Dragon Slayer is not bad in PvP, because it does a decent amount of damage over time. It can actually solo an entire team without dying. So it's okay early game, even a little bit into the mid game. Heart Watcher's kind of the same boat. She's really good early game in PvP because she heals herself, she weakens enemies, and she's going to stack her own damage against them. So she literally destroys people. 1v1, my Heart Watcher destroys Vesses 99% of the time. Um, so that's kind of how it goes. She's really good early and mid game. Once you start getting to the end game where people are building teams like these dudes up here, where you I mean you're looking at. Light and Dark and Valentino and Cruz all 10-starred, massive amounts of crowd control. Yeah, she's going to fall off a bit because she doesn't have natural crowd control. Of course, with Valentino and your team, she would have some. Um, and like Cruz, she does weaken the enemies with her basic and active skills. Well, he doesn't do it with basic, but whatever. Does make enemies weaker and debuffs them with her active skill, knocking their attack down a bit. But in-game, it's pretty much all CC. Like you see there, this guy's got Dark Arthodol, that's crowd control. Faithblade, crowd control. Michelle, crowd control. Cruz, crowd control. Valentino, crowd control. The only one without crowd control is Amivore, and he's the dark hero that's supposed to be, I guess, 
It's not even an aura. He's not even a, it's not an aura. This guy's just running random crap. All with crowd control, though. So that's kind of the idea, as you see at the end of the game. It's pretty much all crowd control. So she doesn't really fit in great there. But like I said, though, just because she's not fantastic at the very end of the game doesn't mean you shouldn't build one. It doesn't mean she can't be used in PvP. I use mine in PvP all the time. She's one of my only 10 stars. Of course you do. Um, so she definitely has some use in PvP, but she's not going to be a best unit all the way to the end of the game, okay? She's not like building Dark Arth at all, who's going to be amazing in PvP all the way till the end. Um, it's just much harder to build one. So anyways, that's pretty much the basic analysis out of the way. Um, really good. Any kind of PvE-oriented area, she's going to excel in very well. PvP, she falls off late game, but early game, she does just fine. There's no reason not to run her there. Um, but let's do some battles. Let's get in and do some battles. Do I have any energy here? I have one energy. That's perfect. That is Butamus. Okay, so we're going to do this guy. Um, we'll run Lutz in the front line so he doesn't get hit. And we'll just do like so. We'll fight a, a Walter Marauder, and then we'll do a couple broken spaces. Or a, eh, we'll run a broken space battle. And see what we can get there. So as you see, already dropped a 1.2 million attack as you just started. Now this is not, like I said, I don't have the best artifact on her for damage. Okay, remember she's got an attack with crowd control reduction and reduced damage. So it's not the best for Marauder fighting, um, but it's not terrible. It's not terrible. It's going to do okay. Keeps her from getting stunned quite as much like against Walter bosses and things like that. Um... But like I said, if you wanted more damage output, a crit-based artifact, or, you know, like, it's the Punisher, the Immortal, with crit and crit damage and attack is fantastic. Even pure attack can do pretty well. Um, but anyways, we're going to let this battle run its way out. Um, 7.6 million, that's what I'm talking about. Get in there. Do work. Do work. She's so hot. I love her. She do good. But like I said, she's stacking the damage. As you can see, even my weakest units, like a, a five-star Cruise is dropping over 100,000 damage, and he's a five-star Cruise. okay? He's not, a, he's not a good damage dealer, but with all those debuffs stacked on him, um, with the Sigmund, the Wal uh, Walter didn't stack debuffs, but Sigmund and Heart Watcher, I guess Cruise also does some debuffs, even the weakest units are hitting decently hard, and that's kind of nice. So we'll see what we get here. A lot of stuns from the Walter, but 140 million damage, not bad. Um, Heart Watcher dropped 52 million. Now, of course, she was fighting someone she's strong against. That was a Shadow faction. Forest does extra damage to Shadow. Um, but like I said, she's going to boost your entire team's damage. Even my 5-star Cruise did 2 million damage. A 5-star Cruise. That does not happen often. Okay, but he, the Sigmund's debuffing the armor. Heart Watcher's boosting their damage taken. Cruise is also boosting their damage taken. So even... Really, units that don't do anything can do a little bit of damage, and that's nice. Um, so that's not bad. She also heals herself, um, but I guess Vesta took care of most of the healing there. You're not going to see that. Whatevs. 140 mil. I'm not upset with it. And then we'll do, a, I guess, a broken spaces battle. Um, eeny, meeny, miny. Let's do the light one. <clears throat> none, of, none of my team is weak to light, so we'll just do one of these. Uh, we'll run you in the front line. I think he hits everybody anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but we'll just do it like this. I think that's everything we need. Um, you don't need to be there, though. We'll put Lutz in for a little more armor break, even though I don't think we actually need it. Um, yeah, I don't think we do. But whatever. We'll watch this battle out as well and see what we can do against the Broken Spaces. This is only a level 300 Broken Space boss, so it's not like the uh, the crazy in-game freakish nutsack. 450s and 500. I don't even know if they go to 500. I've never beat the 450s, to be honest. Uh, so I don't know. But like I said, you're kind of getting the idea. I mean, when you're dropping 52 million damage with a unit, that shows you pretty much what they're good for. Amazing at dealing boss damage. Um, she does do pretty good in PvP. Like I said, early game when she's debuffing units and making them take more damage, that's good. It means that your nukes can actually nuke much more effectively. If they're hitting somebody that's taking 80% increased damage, their nuke's going to do almost double the normal damage. Okay, so instead of critting for a mil, you're going to crit for nearly 2 million damage. That's a really big difference, and people don't like to weigh that in. They're like, oh, she doesn't have crowd control, she's trash. Um, no, she still has a lot of use early and mid-game. It's just when you get to the end of things where you're running three Faith Blades and three Dark Arthodols, yeah, no, she's not going to compete with that team. That team is freakish, and you've spent like 35 years building it. Um, so like I said, no, she's not great for the in-game PvP. This is really where she shines, and this is why I like her so much, because I love PvE. It's, it's my jam. I like doing lots of damage. I like seeing big numbers, and 
Also, that she can do, like, not only great boss damage, but carry you in the Aspen dungeon is a great reason to build a Heart Watcher. Aspen hero, super important hero. Only 70 million damage versus this one. As you can see, though, she's still actually keeping pace with my Walter, which is pretty impressive. Walter is usually a really high damage unit, um, and she's pulling 21 million damage here. That's a good amount of damage. <laughs> That's not bad at all, um, especially with the team that I've got running here. I don't have a 10-star Sigmund running. I don't have a 10-star Cruise, which doesn't really matter. I mean, 5-star Cruise does pretty much the same thing. Um, but like, I don't have an ideal PvE lineup yet, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Anyways, like you see, great boss damage can carry you in the Aspen Dungeon. That's pretty much what Heart Watcher does. That is her job. That is her sole mission in life, is to destroy buttholes in PvE. And that's exactly what she does. So my recommendation to you guys, oh, also, before we leave here, there's a little deal going on right now. I don't know how long this is going to last, um, but it brings up all the old event items, which is kind of cool. Um, I could pick up a Punish the Immortal Staff. 15,000 gems is a bit excessive, um, but that's what, that's what I was talking about earlier. If you guys don't know what that artifact does, it adds attack, crit, and crit damage, and that's only at level 1. I believe it caps it. Is it 20-something percent, 25% crit? And 50% crit damage. I can't remember 100% what its stats end up as. But as you can see, that would be monstrous on a Heart Watcher. Because she scales really well with crit. Boosting her crit damage as well means those crits are going to hit even harder. And boosting her attack means she's going to heal even more. It's a really, really solid artifact for her. I might actually pick it up. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But there's the analysis. Not... Uh, Wrong button. There's the analysis of Heart Watcher. Really good hero in PvE. Pretty much anywhere you put her in PvE, she's going to do very well. Um, not so great in late game PvP, but early to mid game, she's absolutely fine. She's actually going to do really well there, I think. Um, the gearing, pretty much you're going to want to focus crit on her because that's how she heals for the Aspen Dungeon. If you're going Aspen Dungeon, your artifact should probably give you some reduced damage if possible to help a little bit with the tankiness because she can be a little squishy if she does get stunned. It can be game over really fast. Um, so you kind of want the, the reduced damage can be really nice there. If you're going for straight out damage, obviously crit and attack are your best friends, but that's pretty much it guys. There's Heart Watcher in a nutshell. She's a freak. She's amazing. If you can build one, I would always recommend you build one because you're never going to not need her. Pretty much how it's going to go. When you're fighting, whether you're fighting guild bosses, marauders, whatever it is, Heart Watcher always has a use on your team. There's no reason to ever throw a copy of her away unless you've already got a 10-star Heart Watcher and you don't need any more. All right? So always build, in my opinion. If you get her, build her. She's amazing. But that's me for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please make sure to smash that thumbs up button and show your support. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe as well and tell your friends about it because that definitely helps me out a lot. And I will see you guys in the next one.